Welcome to Biker's Toolbox. I am Ralph and in this video John and myself will show you how to fit a new set of piston rings and install the barrels on my 1981 Kawasaki Z1100 engine. Hello, I'm John. This bike smoked like a pig so the barrels have been re-bored. You can see the criss-cross pattern of the final honing following boring. Because you simply can't buy original oversized pistons for a bike this old, I have elected to fit a set of MTC high compression pistons made for performance engines. I'm not looking for extra power, but you have to work with what is available. On some bikes you have to be careful about the effects of the extra load, but these old quacker motors are bomb proof. Firstly you need to carefully open up the ring packet and separate out the different rings. On most four stroke bikes there will be two thicker compression rings. The old control ring on this bike is made up of two very thin rings and a wiggly spacer ring. Sometimes the old control ring will be made in one very fragile piece. The first and easiest ring to fit is the oil control spacer ring, but be careful that the ends butt up against one another. Next we fit the two oil scraper or oil control rings. The spacer keeps the two rings apart. The first sits at the bottom of the groove and the second against the top. The position of the gap between the ends of the rings should be staggered and often the instructions that come with the rings or the workshop manual will stipulate this. You need to look carefully at the compression rings and the instructions to determine if they have to be fitted in a particular way. As rings are surprisingly fragile, we recommend using this simple, inexpensive tool to fit compression rings. Piston rings are expensive, so take your time. Whilst John has been fitting rings to pistons for well over 30 years, you will notice that he takes his time and gently slides the delicate rings into the grooves. You will see that these two rings are very different and have to be fitted the right way up. The position of the ring end gaps must never be in line. Sometimes the manual will stipulate where the gaps should be, but if in doubt, put one at the front and one at the back. Stuff clean rags into all the crankcase openings and the cam chain tunnel to ensure that you don't drop any foreign objects into the crankcase, which can be a nightmare to remove again. Here, John lubricates the gudgeon pin and the small end with oil before assembling them. Notice how he works methodically and carefully making sure that he doesn't snag anything. Until the rings are protected by the barrels they are very vulnerable to accidental damage. When working on older bikes we always use well seal to fit gaskets. With a perfect mating surface that hasn't been stripped before you can get away without. But for the sake of a few minutes with a paintbrush we prefer to play safe. Well seal was originally formulated by Rolls Royce and we rate it very highly. Fitting barrels especially to multi-cylinder bike engines, can be a real headache. But these ring clamps make it so much easier. Most gudgeon pins are held in place by wire circlips, but these racing pistons use Teflon buttons instead.
Select the correct size of band for the ring compressor tool and pre-assemble it. Then loosely slide it over the piston and rings with the flanged out section of the band uppermost. Then do up the wing nut compressing the rings into their grooves, ensuring that the top ring is just below the flange of the band. Do up the nut until the band will just slide up and down the piston. Then fit the second ring compressor tool in the same fashion. Having fitted the base gasket to the bottom of the barrels and having buttered it with well seal, we now lubricate the bores with oil. This stage is absolutely imperative. This next stage is where you will really see the benefit of these ring clamps if you've ever tried the alternatives. In this video we were evaluating these clamps as well as our first prototype of a tool for holding the pistons at top dead centre. Anyone who is watching this who has fitted pistons before will immediately see the value of these tools. This set of bores would have been especially difficult due to the big bore kit where there is virtually no lead into the bores. We have further developed the TDC tool since but it has not been manufactured yet. You next simply undo the wing nuts on the ring compressor tools and carefully remove the clamp bands. You simply repeat the actions on the outer bores, though it helps to have a second set of hands as you obviously can't hold the outer pistons at TDC, but we have found that the outer are much easier providing you have the ring clamps. Once all the rings are safely in their bores, you can start to relax a bit. This is the time when you make sure that the cam chain is in the tunnel and isn't fouling anything. And that all the tensioner components are where they should be. Then gently and evenly tap the barrels down until they meet the base gasket. The last stage before fitting the head is to ensure that all is well. Simply hold the cam chain up to prevent it jamming inside the crankcase and turn the engine over with a spanner or a socket to make sure that everything is turning freely. It's a lovely sight at this stage of a build. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. It was shot in my own workshop with my old friend Johnny Hopkins. We have in excess of 30 years of motorcycle fettling experience each. We both have hobby businesses repairing and building bikes to help finance our own bike collections.